Here are all the questions that we are going to look at uh, for this one, but I'm going to split them up onto different pages. So here we go. The graphs of f, which is a parabola, which is this one over here, they said f, and g, which is the straight line, which is mx plus 2, are sketched. a and e are the x-intercepts of f, yep, we can see that, and b and d are the y-intercepts. Okay, so for the first question, for two marks, it says determine the coordinates of b and d. Okay, so have a look at b. That is the y-intercept of the graph of f, okay? So how do you find a y-intercept? You let x equal to zero, remember that? So we take the graph of f, and we let x equal to zero, okay? Like that. And if you do that, you're gonna get four. So then b's coordinates, don't just say four, you're gonna say that it's x is zero, because we said x is zero, and it's y is four, okay? There we go. Now to find D, D is the y-intercept of uh, G, okay? And so if you say um, y is equal to, G of x is equal to, we don't even have m, but it's okay. I'll show you why. Because we're going to let x equal to 0, and then you're going to end up with the following. So that's 0, right? m times 0, and so that's going to give us 2. So then the coordinates of D would be 0 and 2. So we've got 0 and 4, and then we've got 0 and 2 over there. This next question says write down the range of F. Now remember your range is your Y values. So look, if you look at F, which is this graph here, so you're first going to look at the lowest value. So imagine that those arrows are trying to show you that that graph could keep going down, 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 down. Okay, so it's going to go, it's just going to keep going down. Okay, so it would go all the way down to negative infinity. Now what is the highest value that it has? Well, the highest value is over here at its turning point, which is a 4. So you could, in, if you use interval notation, you could say y is an element. Now you always put the smallest value first, so negative infinity, always with a round bracket for infinity. And that's going to go all the way up to 4 with the square bracket. Okay? If you, another way, if you want to just use uh, set builder notation, you can just say that y is smaller or equal to um, 4. Okay? So you're saying that y is smaller than or equal to 4. So those are yours. So you don't have to give both of those, just one of those. Okay. This question says, determine the length of AE. Okay, so you see what happens at A and you see what happens at E. It is the x-intercepts of this graph. Okay, so let's write that graph down. So let's just write here that A and E are the x-intercepts. Now how do we find x-intercepts? You let y equals zero. So this is y, so you make that zero. There we go. And now you just solve. So I'm going to take the x squared to the left. Now when you take the square root on both sides, you must say plus and minus for this one on the right, and that means that x will be plus and minus two. And so that means that the a is the minus two, so it has an x value of minus 2 and a y value of 0, like we said. And then for e, it has an x value of 2 and a y value of 0. What you could have also done here, oh, I haven't even answered the question. So if this is minus 2 and this is positive 2, then that means this distance is 2 because it's going from 0 here to negative 2, so that's 2, and then this distance is 2. So what would that whole distance be? Well, that would be 4 units. So AE would then be 4 units. Okay, there is another way you could have done this part over here. Instead of doing the square root method, some learners don't like that, you could have taken everything to the left, so you would have ended up with x squared minus 4, and then you could have factorized this as a difference of squares. So I'll show you that over here. So you could change that to x minus 2, x plus 2. And then if you solve, you'd end up with x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. So therefore, x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 
minus 2. Okay, now the next, well, this question says calculate the value of m. That's very easy to do. I'll show you now. You're just going to say g of x is equal to mx plus 2. All that you need is a certain point or a specific point on that equation, which is the straight line. But don't use d because we've already used that. So what we could use is we could use this point over here where the coordinates are minus 2 and 0. Because minus 2 is a x value and then 0 is a y value. So you could go plug in the 0 in the y and the minus 2 for the x and then you just solve for m. So it's minus 2m plus 2, take the 2m to the other side Divide both sides by 2, and m would be 1. This one says, determine the coordinates of a and c, which is the points of intersection of the two graphs. Okay, so it's where the two graphs intersect. So how do we find the place where two graphs intersect? Well, you take their two equations, which uh, m, what did we say m was? Oh, 1, eh? Yep. And remember that this is actually a y, and this is actually a y. So when your y's are alone like that, you can then, what you do, is you can make these two equations equal to each other, okay? So you can then say minus x squared plus 4 is equal to 1x plus 2. And the reason that this makes sense is the place where the two graphs go into each other, you see that? At that place where they go into each other, their y values are the same. They have the same y value. So what we're doing here is we're saying that um, this one's y and this one's y are the same as each other. So we just make them equal. And now you're just gonna solve. So I'm going to, you can take all the x's to the left, or you, I mean, you, sorry, you can take everything to the uh, ones to the left or to the right. I'm gonna take everything to the right-hand side. So this x squared will become positive. And then this will become this and this. Now you need to make a trinomial. So the way you make a trinomial is you look at this number here, which is a 2. Now how do you write 2? Two? 2 times 1, right? So now you've got to look at this number in the front here, and you've got to think about how can I use these two numbers to make this number? Well, you could say 2 minus 1. So you're going to say x and x, and then you're going to say 2 minus 1. So the 2 is a positive. Now you're just going to make both of those brackets equal to 0. So you could say x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. And so if you solve here, you'll get that x is minus 2 or x is equal to 1. And so we now know that the x value of a would be minus 2, but we already knew that. But we also have the x value of c, which is 1. What don't we have? Well, we don't have the y values. So how do you find the y values? Well, it's easy, because once you have the x value, all you do is you just go plug that x value into this equation or into this equation. It doesn't matter which one you want to do. I'm going to choose this one. It looks easier to work with. And so I'm going to plug in uh, x as minus 2. And if I do that, I get 0. But we already knew that the y value there was a 0. We already knew that. But now what about this one? Well, now you plug its x value in, so that will be, um, because remember, I'm using the straight lines equation because this point over here, this point C, it is a point on the straight line, but it's also a point on the parabola. So you could plug this x value into this equation or this equation, it doesn't matter because it's on both of their graphs. It's on the parabola graph and it's on the straight line graph. Okay, but I'm going to use the straight line, so I'm just going to plug in x as 1, and that gives you 1 plus 2, which is 3. So the y value here would be 3. So in your test, when you give your answers, you would just say that a is negative 2 and 0, and then c is uh, 1 and 3. Okay, now this last question says that if um, k of x, now k of x is a brand new graph, is equal to g of minus x, okay, that's interesting, determine the values of x such that this. Okay, so that's quite an interesting question. Okay, and this one is worth two marks. So let me explain. So they're saying that k of x is the same as g, but all the x's have become the negative of what they were. 
So if something was negative 4, then it became a 4. If something was a 3, now it's a negative 3. So all the x's have switched around. Let's think about what that does to the graph. So if, for example, you take this point and you switch its x from a 1 to a negative 1, then it's going to end up going over here. Okay? And if you take... So let's just do that in green. If you take this point over here, whoops, that's not going to do anything because its x value is already a 0. Uh, if you take this one, it will go from x being negative 2 to x being positive 2. Okay, so this graph is now going to go um, something like that. Okay, you with me? So I just took some of the points and I just switched all of the x values around. So this is what the graph of k would look like. They said it's the graph of g where all the x's have just flipped around. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now they said, determine the values of x so that the graph of f, now remember the graph of f is the parabola, is bigger than the graph of um, k. So they wanna know what that means in mathematics. They are telling, they are asking you, where is this graph, the yellow one, above the green one? So where is yellow above green? Now, if you look in this area over here, which graph is higher up? Well, the yellow one's all the way down here, but the green one is up here. So the green one is above. So that's not what we want. If you look in this area over um, here, the green one is still above. Can you see the green one is up here, uh, but the yellow one is all the way down there. So can you see places on the graph where the yellow one is on top? Well, that would be from here up to here. Can you see that in that area, so this area over here, who is on top in that area? Is it green or yellow? Well, yellow is above. See there? Yellow is on top. And that's what they're literally asking us. So now they want you to say, how do you tell them from here to here? How do you say that? You can't just say from there to there. You've got to give the, they said, determine the x values. So what is the x value over here? Can you remember? I know I've got this 0 and 2 written over there, but that was, that was for this coordinate. But this coordinate over here, uh, we said was, you see, so it's from that place where they uh, intersect each other. Now, the place where they intersect is going to be exactly the opposite side of where this one intersects. I know I didn't draw it nicely, but it's going to be uh, because we're just going to take that point exactly across, right? Because here it was 1 and 3, uh, but then we just changed the x value, so it's just going to be negative 1 and 3. So the x value there is negative 1, and the x value here is 2. So we're going to go from minus 1 all the way to 2 for the x values, right? From minus 1 up to 2. So you could say that x can be any number bigger than minus 1, but smaller than 2. So from that means that it goes from minus 1 up to 2. Your other option is to use interval notation where you could say from negative 1 up to 2.